Here is a 2024 Honda Pilot Trail Sport in diffuse blue pearl over black synthetic leather interior. Last year we got a refresh which increased horsepower and gave us this Trail Sport variant which increases ground height by one inch giving all-terrain tires a skid plate standard all-wheel drive. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm going to explain why the Trail Sport is unique to the Pilot and different trim options with some pros and cons and comparable rivals. Up front is going to get LED headlights and daytime runnings. The gloss black is going to highlight this diffused blue pearl, which is going to be in the enlarged grille. It became wider last year to give more of a sleek profile and more boxy, which gives a more truck-like stance. Not only did they tweak the exterior components, but it's a specially tuned suspension and all-wheel drive with trail modes. Underneath the hood on all of the pilots is going to be a 3.5 liter V6, getting an increase of five horsepower from last year, 285 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. The Trail Sport is unlocks the 5,000 pounds of towing, achieving 18 MPGs for the city and 23 MPGs for the highway they also dropped the nine-speed automatic transmission last year and implemented the revised or second gen 10-speed automatic transmission so when you're putting all this in perspective honda done a full transformation and then adding these 18 inch multi-spoke alloy wheels that have the all-terrain tires in which you may actually take this off-road for the first time and not have to worry about getting stuck. And Nissan, Toyota, Hyundai, they're all going to have variants that will have somewhat of an off-road performance image, but may not be able to tackle some of the all-terrain that you can with this, in which the new Grand Highlander doesn't even have a TRD kit. Nissan. That's going to get the Rock Creek in which you'll have more torque in the Nissan. You'll get the all-terrain tires with the beadlock style. It's going to tow the most at 6,000 pounds. Gloss black elements come onto the side view mirror and on the roof rails with the door handles. And every pilot will have a different weight distribution. Here is at 55.3, 44.7 LED taillights with the gloss black elements yet again. Even though you got the pilot spelled out, I like that it's more hidden because of all the black elements trail sport badging with reverse parking sensors and a 360 degree reverse camera because of the trail sport. Power liftgate going into 18.6 cubic feet of storage behind the third rung. 12 volt charger, an area that some nooks basically on both sides. This is also reversible which is nice for wet objects so you can put it this way and with the trail sport you may be doing a little bit more of that and underneath it is a deep storage pocket spare tire is going to be tucked underneath and split fold the third row at a 60 40 split from the back that's going to increase cargo to 48.5 cubic feet fold down those captain seats and that's going to max cargo to over 86 cubic feet of storage we need to go inside this trail sport, start it up so you can hear that exhaust. <laughs> 10 way power seat adjustment for the driver, four way power seat adjustment for the passenger. Memory for the driver, trail sport badging, the orange contrast stitching in this durable synthetic leather. Headroom and leg room. The refresh just made the Pilot better last year, starting with storage in front of the passenger. Gloss black elements. The Trail Sport gets the orange contrast stitching that's going to be found throughout and more of a flat dash layout, and it bulges out more so towards the driver cockpit. The 10 point two digital gauge cluster you will not receive in the trail sport but you can go through an array of information it doesn't have navigation that's going to be included on the touring and the elite nine inch touchscreen with wireless apple carplay android auto sirius xm cabin talk am fm streaming bluetooth audio 
The reason why you like this is because it's a third row, so you don't have to yell at the kids in the back. You just simply push on there and you will speak through the microphone of the vehicle to the back seat occupants. Put it into reverse and we have a 360 degree reverse camera full trajectory for the front and the rear. You can change different camera layouts. And what Honda does to make it a little bit easier is while you're driving, you can just simply push the camera on the stock to get that 360 camera as well. Try climate control settings, a storage pocket with a QI wireless charger, the key fob for the pilot, USB ports, 12 volt, no pass through, which it would be nice, but we do have eight cup holders that can fit 32 ounce bottles inside. Driving mode select, you got a ton of them. So you got sport, normal, econ, snow, trail, sand, and tow. The brake hold button, which you don't have to hold the brake when you're at a stoplight. It's going to be more sporty. The contrast stitching comes in yet again. A deep and wide storage pocket with an area for some pins. Leather wrap steering wheel. It's heated three spoke with the gloss black around the sides. Adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist the stocks and the push button start. I like also how they do not copy the Civic in the Pilot, it has its own design. Nine speakers is going to be with the Trail Sport, 12 speakers through Bose will be on the Touring and the Elite. Everyday materials up top, the gloss black is going to be found inside with that contrast stitching yet again. One touch up and down for all the windows. The first tier of storage and the second tier of storage with a large panel moonroof that goes to the back seats and a auto dimming rear view mirror. For the second row, headroom, not an issue. And these are captain seats. So you can recline them back. You can also adjust them forward. This is all the way back. Going forward, I wouldn't have any leg space. Feet space is not going to be a problem because there's only two occupants here. Third climate control setting, home plug, two USBs and storage behind both the driver and passenger. And you got a little sleeve here for your cell phone. The door is going to receive the manual sun shades. And then you get the gloss black elements with the contrast stitching yet again in the same storage pockets that are found in the front come into the back. You go into the third row, push the button. It's gonna adjust it forward. And it's pretty easy access with the captain seats. The rails are not going to be pushed forward as much as I would like, but that's what happens with captain seats. You also have this here that bulges out. Sliding this back for leg space. Cup holders on both sides with USB ports and air vents and headroom isn't bad at all for a third row variant. You can also recline these back, which I've done that on the other side. So you can see you're going to lose a little bit of that cargo capacity, but it makes it a little bit more comfortable of a drive with a reclined. And sliding to the center is not going to be an issue at all, only because the 60-40 split is going to be a little bit for my back. Feet space is actually carved out and you have this area here so you can just stretch it out. 285 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque, increase of five horsepower from last generation, retuned. It's always nice, this functions down. Okay, it just, this technology. Retuned all wheel drive, retuned suspension, you got a lot going on when you get into the trail sport. It is really the sweet spot if you're looking to do some light off-roading and to get some of the features because underneath this trim, you may not receive the QI wireless charger, standard heated seats. But what I dislike right off the bat is you have to go to the Elite in order to get ventilated seats. The Touring will get you the heated second row seats and the EXL and the Trail Sport are the only options for the captain seats. So there's a few little twists there, but I can understand what Honda's doing because they're trying to put you in a trim that you want to be in to give you all the amenities you need. We're going to see some of that performance now. It's a box on wheels and it does a good job with the sound deadening. All terrain wheels. You don't feel anything really. It's still a smooth ride. You're sitting up higher at 8.3 inches of clearance, which is one inch more than the standard. 
and it's so wide inside the interior of this, it's just more of a relaxed, refined drive. Going against some of the competition, you're going to have more storage nooks kind of everywhere, except no pass-through, where Nissan will take care of you on that, and a lot of the variants are starting to do it. I'm kind of shocked that Toyota didn't do it with the Grand Highlander, they just give you a little sleeve because they have a lot of real estate here in the center, but this is the most storage you can fit for the armrest area in the front of all of the vehicles, even better than Acura, in which if you're considering an Acura, you might want to look at this because you have more storage capacity. If you don't option the Trail Sport, you've got the removable seat, very similar to them, except you could store it underneath the floor in the cargo where you can't do that in the Acura. Also a touchscreen infotainment. <laughs> you have to use Acura True Touch and you're spending maybe five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 more if you're looking to get something optioned up, like an A-Spec with some features. Whereas you got the Trail Sport and you're under that price point. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting with the Pro, when you go to the Trail Sport, you get all wheel drive so you don't have to worry it's 5,000 pounds of towing. The interior, it boasts a lot of space. Some other pros about the Trail Sport is getting that extra clearance, all-terrain tires. The package itself is good and unique because you're still underneath that 60,000 threshold, which I understand it's a pilot and you're probably thinking last gen, well, I was able to get them for like $40,000. Every vehicle has went up. So when I'm considering it went through a full refresh, I got an increase of performance. I would say the big problem that I have with the Trail Sport is not the pricing, it's that you get the same towing capacity as everyone else. When you go into Nissan for the Pathfinder Creek, they increase horsepower more and torque more than the standard, and towing is at 6,000 pounds. So you're not getting any increase here, they're just tweaking the all-wheel drive system, throwing some aesthetics. Yes, they changed the suspension, it just would be nice that you get a little bit more capabilities. You have some more driving modes, but you're not getting full features either. You can't get heated rear seats here. You have to go up the tier. Before I get to more cons, the brakes, they have been increased from the prior gen that was done last year. And the performance, naturally aspirated V6. The exhaust note will filter in, otherwise a very composed and smooth drive, which is surprising when you're considering they have altered a few things to make this a little bit more rugged. Going back to some cons is it is more tier based. You can't option features in which it would be nice if they did something like Ford where you can do an option or you could do like an a la carte. You don't have to do the full option. You could just pick a feature. You can't even do that. The drive is still smooth. And as I've reviewed almost every trim for the pilot last year, the major difference that I feel here is the ground clearance. It does feel a little bit higher off the ground, but the way everything is tuned, they did a good job. And even on the exterior, the profile looks sporty and keeping a rugged profile blend. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Ocean Honda for giving us this 2024 Honda Pilot Trail Sport for our car review.